Wednesday. Welcome, everybody, back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hope you're having a great week. It's great here because we're getting kind of close to golf time. And and I say that with a little bit of hesitation because it's one of those things that anytime you talk about it, it's like, you know, Fight Club. Like, you just don't talk about Fight Club. When you get close to spring, you just don't talk about spring coming yet because there's a good chance that we still get hit with snow here in Detroit. So anyway, but it's getting close. Uh, I might go play today. Uh, waiting on a buddy of mine. We'll see. It's going to be sloppy. Of course, it'll be stupid slow and all that, but, you know, we could go out and play. So, uh, but uh, before we get into that, just want to let you know, today's podcast brought to you by Titleist New Pro V1 and Pro V1X Golf Balls. So, uh, brand new ball for 2021. Uh, I'm excited to hit it. I haven't hit it yet. As you can see, these boxes are brand new. Uh, but, uh, yeah, completely redesigned from uh, from core to cover. New softer cast urethane uh, cover, so increases green side spin, uh, gives you more control. Uh, they basically, the Pro V1X is the pretty low long spin, where the Pro V1X is, is very low long spin uh, or, or long game spin. And then, uh, you know, uh, iron spin and around the green, uh, Pro V1X is going to be uh, a, a little higher there as well as launch a little higher. So uh, brand new ball, super excited to go hit it. Uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to hit it tomorrow just because... No idea what the course conditions are going to be like, but uh, I've been a Pro V1 uh, guy. I've kind of switched between the, the, the X and the Pro V1, uh, so uh, I, I play kind of both, depending on, on my game and, and where it is at the time. So, um, But uh, yeah, like I said, if you're looking for uh, you know a, a phenomenal ball, I mean, you already know the name, Pro V1, Pro V1X. Uh, it, it is uh, the number one ball in golf, so brand new 2021 ball. Give it a try, see what you, uh, you think, and I will let you know uh, my thoughts on it very shortly so it's uh like i said an exciting time getting close but uh yeah my buddy john texted me today or yesterday and said hey let's uh let's go out and play and uh i said of course i usually play out is is too wet they basically have the recording already that says uh you know it's too too wet the course is still closed so i don't think i'll be able to go out to my old normal st Clair shores but uh, i will be able to i guess go hit up the uh, the ultra exclusive uh, maple lane golf club which are if you're from Metro Detroit and played, it is very interesting. Let me just tell you, people, it is a uh, is, is what they call a shooting gallery. So a thin line of trees maybe divides you from the green right next to you where people are hitting. And uh, it is it is like I think is it three eighteens or something like that. It's like it's like fifty four holes or something jammed into a tiny metropolitan area lot. So, um, but hey. If we get out to play golf, we get out to play golf. I'm excited about that. So, uh, you know, if we get out there, I'll be excited. Um, but we'll see. It, it's and it's one of those things you can't set a tee time. It's it's kind of first comes first serve. So uh, we'll get there. We'll see what happens. And if we get on, great. If not, you know, hey, we're, the next week I think's got some warm days as well. Uh, be it they they may be a bit soggy. So I was at the range again this weekend. Of course, I uh, in the rain. Uh, of course, it was uh, it was supposed to be a little warmer than I thought it was, and then I also got there and it, you know, like I said, drove through the rain. It wasn't really raining, but it was like kind of sprinkling and all that. And it was chilly. Uh, it was colder than I thought. The place was packed because I think everybody thought it was supposed to be warm, <laughs> and it wasn't. Uh, the, the old Royal, the Royal Oak Golf Center opens up at like 9 a.m. I was there at 9, 10. It was like half full already, at least the indoor covered heated bays and, uh, probably halfway through my bucket, about 30% of the, the guy, uh, there was about 30% of the bays had people waiting behind to, to get the next one. So a lot of people getting the itch, a lot of people wanting to get out there. I saw a lot of, uh, interesting bags. I saw a lot of new stuff. I saw, you know, some, a bunch of TSI head covers, saw a bunch, you know, some Sim 2 head covers actually as well, which, uh, I was pretty, uh, surprised at, but, um, you know, just seeing a lot of, uh, you know, some guys, with, there was some new equipment in the bag and it was, uh, also saw some very interesting things. I saw a guy with a brand new, like 2021 Titleist staff bag, like the quilted one that, I mean, it looks amazing. The new ones do, uh, had that and didn't, and only had a Scotty Cameron putter. There was not a Titleist club in the bag. Uh, I mean, unless his head covers were covering Titleist irons, and he had, I believe it was a Callaway and a TaylorMade head cover on there. Uh, I think those were the two. But, yeah, unless he was hiding his Titleist driver underneath different head covers, uh, did not have a Titleist club in the bag other than that Scotty, which was interesting. You don't see that a whole lot. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, just a, a few things like that were very interesting. So... 
But, uh, but it was fun. Got to go out there, uh, hit some balls in the rain, which is, you know, like I said, it's never fun, but it is what it is. You know, you, you take what you can get. And, uh, and yeah, I'm starting to narrow down some clubs in the bag, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think everybody knows I'm going to play the, the ZX7 uh, irons, which are already in the bag. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, it, it's going to be, in a sense, boring because I don't think I'm going to, at least right now, I don't know if I'm going to switch wedges. I, I think I'll pr probably play my um, my SM8s that I had last year. They're still in great shape and, you know, they're raw, they're customized, all that. So I'll probably keep playing those. Uh, I think the utility iron might uh, might go the way of new level. I, I, I hit that new level NLU-01, which I talked about, I think, last week. And I just slapped a new shaft in it. Uh, I put a Fujikura Pro 95 uh, in it and kind of reduced the length down to closer to four iron length. I think it's about a half inch or yeah, about a half inch longer, just so I can choke down. I could play it full off the tee, get a little more distance out of it. But that, I think, is going in the bag. It just, it really feels good. Uh, it's easy to hit. And like I said, the, the sound and feel are just phenomenal on it. So that, that could go in the bag. I did, it is a 21 degree. I did bend it back to 23, uh, which actually isn't bad because it adds a little bounce, which the only downside of the bounce is really low back in the head. Uh, so we'll see how that works. But uh, at least on the mats I was hitting, it was it was totally fine because I, I bent it uh, the other day. And they're not easy to bend. I'll tell you that. If you're a, a tinker like myself and you have your own bending machine, the NLU-01 is not an easy club to bend. Um, it took a, it took a while and uh, a lot of it, it took a lot of time and uh, what, what felt like a heck of a lot of effort to uh, to get that thing you know two degrees weak. But uh, but I got it there and uh, it's two degrees weak, so twenty three degrees. And uh, like I said, Pro, uh, Fujikuro Pro ninety five in it and i'm pretty excited i can't wait to hit it i had to put a four gram tip weight in it to get it to d2 uh swing weight which is what i i play for pretty much everything and uh it took a, a small four gram tip weight to get it there so, so really nothing crazy i mean it really wasn't that uh you know that far off which is awesome because it did go down i mean lengthwise probably like an, an inch from stock um but I was gonna, I was gonna reach out a new level and say hey could I, they make a 20 they make a 23 i believe i think it's 23 or 24 and I was going to hit him up and see if I could get that. But then, you know, my boy Ryan Barath kind of reminded me, he's like, why don't you just bend the 21 week and take a little offset out, which the the, the NLU-01 doesn't really have a ton of offset uh, anyway. But I was like, you know what, that's a good idea. Let's take a little offset out of it. Let's add a little bounce and let's see what happens. So like I said, hitting off the mat, so far so good, uh, like where it's at. And then uh, we'll see with the uh, the Fuji Pro. I took out the, it was a, uh, a Hazardous Smoke Black uh, 90 uh, hybrid shaft that was in it before so I took that out and the uh the, the fujiko pro 95 which should launch a little higher which i, I wouldn't even mind like this thing's a, a, a pretty flat ball flight for me at the most for the most part so and a little height I, I'm, I'm i think i'm gonna be good with it so uh we'll see that's gonna be uh, there but like i said the uh, feel i mean it's it's the best feeling uh in sounding utility i've hit so far this year so yeah that's there um and then today we're gonna talk uh, a couple callaway slash odyssey clubs so I don't know if this show is going to be crazy long or anything like that, but um, we're going to first talk about uh, something that I, I I was debating whether to do this only because I haven't been on a full green yet. Like I said, I might get out today uh, and actually putt, but I know the greens are going to be super long, super bumpy, so it's going to be hard to get like a true review, but uh, I've been hitting the new Odyssey 10 series putter. Uh, so they've come out with the, the, the two ball 10, uh, the triple track 10, and then there's just the standard 10, which just has a single line on it. And that, for me, has was pretty much what I played last year. But uh, I, I was debating whether to do the actual review on it because I haven't been outside. I haven't been able to hit, like, 30-foot lags and stuff like that. I've basically just been putting in my basement and hitting, you know, 10-footers at the max. But uh, I have put my mat into a spot on my basement where kind of the, the drain is. So it does have some break. It, it's a, it's a nice little uh, left to righter going up the hill on my perfect practice mat. Um, so I, I, I was kind of hesitant to do it, but I, but I'm like, you know, heck with it. Let's just, let's, let's go. I mean, I, I've, I've kind of, I wouldn't say I'm running low on stuff to hit, but there's a few things that I just haven't got my hands on to, to hit yet that they're, they're at the office, whatever. And I, I just haven't been in the office a ton. I've uh, been working mostly from home with, uh, with COVID and everything. So there's some, still some more stuff coming. Don't worry about that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting out to the range and also getting my hands on some of the stuff that I just haven't yet. So, um, so yeah, so, so honestly sent in the, uh, the new, new, you know, black series 10, or, or as they just call it the, the 10 series. Uh, I think the original one was called the black series 10, but, uh, 
but yeah, it's it's kind of their uh, an evolution from the original uh, ten, which I, I did putt with a, a good amount last year. Uh, last year I kind of switched between the Triple Track Seven S and uh, what was I using? Triple Track Seven S and yeah, the Odyssey Stroke Lab Ten, which uh, uh, which you know, like I said, last year was kind of my guy. And as you can see, it has no shaft in it because uh, I pulled it out to, uh, it's a, it was a stability, uh, an OG stability shaft that I uh, put in the new uh, Odyssey, you know, the new, the new 10. So the new 10, as you can see, a little bit thinner uh, alignment line. This is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, but you can see a little bit uh, thinner uh, alignment on it. Um, which I'm, I'm on the fence about. I've actually been lining it up pretty well and hitting it pretty much on target. Uh, but it is something that it, it was definitely different, you know, or, or different getting used to it because it, it was something that was noticeably thinner. I mean, as you can see, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're not, then it doesn't matter. But um, it, it, definitely a thinner uh, alignment line on there. And again, I was kind of like, at first I didn't like it, but the more I put with it, it's actually, I wouldn't say it's less distracting, but it is. Uh, and, but I still line it up pretty well, so I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the big thing that I will say from a cosmetic standpoint is the old uh, Stroke Lab 10 had had holes in it, uh, kind of on the side. So it had the two little wings that come off the back with the two weights on it uh, that kind of protruded out. And then the sides, the right and left side, were basically kind of trusses. They were just, you know, single bars and they had, uh, uh, you know, holes through them that you could see right through and see the turf. And it was fine, whatever. I mean, I, I kind of liked the look. I thought it framed the ball pretty well, all that. Uh, and the new one actually has a, um, is actually filled in. So the whole top is actually black with, uh, you know, with the, the single sight line or sight line. And then the sides are actually a little more squared off. They're not as angular. Uh, it's a little more squared off. And I kind of like, I, I think it's a more simple shape. I, I think the uh, the the wings on it are longer. They go from back to front uh, up more, and it gives it kind of a straighter, boxier look. And I think overall, it's just a little less distracting. And I know that's kind of a dumb word, whatever, but I, I think it is. I think it's a little easier on the eye. Uh, there's no holes where you can see the turf through it, which I, I don't think there was any advantage to that or anything. Um, but, you know, it, it's solid black on the top, a little more squared off. And I think, honestly, to my eye, it just frames the, uh, the ball a little better. Um, it's just, uh, like I said, overall the look, you know, when I first opened it, took it out of the, took the head cover off of it. Um, I, I wasn't in love with it. Uh, and the more I've uh, now hit it and uh, been putting with it in my basement, the more that, uh, I actually do like it. I think it's a, a really good look. And I think it is a, a simpler, cleaner look than last year's. Uh, the weights are the same size. Um, I don't think, uh, I think the weights are 15 grams, uh, each in the back. Uh, and I think it makes it like a 360 gram head, I think, when I, I, I weighed it, right about. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was right about that. Um, as you see with mine, mine's got a stability shaft in it, but it did come with the new Stroke Lab shaft, which they say is seven grams lighter. They say it's a little stiffer, uh, and they say it's a little more stable. Uh, I, I personally don't love the look of it. It's gray. It's gray and silver. Uh, I thought the old one, which was black with a little carbon fiber weave, I like that better. I mean, I think the gray does kind of blend into the the steel tap uh, steel tip section a little better. But overall, I thought the look of last year's of the black with the carbon fiber weave in it uh, was overall a little better looking and a little more expensive looking. It was a little higher tech, all that. I like that one a little bit better. Uh, the standard gray one to me just just doesn't look quite as as nice. Um, but hey, th th that's my opinion. I mean, like I said, performance-wise, it's supposed to be a little stiffer. Again, you know, seven gram difference. I, I don't love counterbalanced putters, which Stroke Lab, you know, that's what it is. It's a lighter shaft. Uh, and then they put a a brass weight in the, the butt end of it to kind of counterbalance the putter. And, uh, you know, the, the counterbalance of the putter is supposed to, you know, improve tempo, help with consistency. And it evidently is, you know, something that, that works because on tour, ton of odyssey putters out there the the the, the uh, basically the the 10 the two ball 10 uh was all over i think rom's been playing that one uh, there's a two ball 10 with a line there's a ton of options of this putter and a lot of them are on tour right now so there's something to be said and, and the stability shaft or the, the stability the, the stroke lab shafts have been all over the tour as well so uh, a lot of guys like them and that's fine i like i said personally i'm just i don't when i had 
Um, I've got another, I've got a two law that had the stroke lab, uh, stroke lab putter in it or stroke lab shaft in it. And I actually popped the, well, I took the weight out of the back, but the story actually goes, I was cutting it down because it was a 35 inch putter. I play like 33 inches, maybe 33 and a half, depending on the putter. I cut it down, didn't even think about it, just cut the grip off, threw it in my, my uh, chop saw, cut it off, and I missed the brass weight by, I mean, a, a fraction of an inch. I mean, it was like nothing. I just missed it. And from then on, anybody who's ever asked to regrip a stroke lab putter, I've always told them that, to watch out for that brass weight. But uh, if you don't like it, you can always pop the grip off, maybe throw a little heat on it and pull that weight off. But uh, yeah, I've, I've always pulled them out. I just don't love the feel of them. Uh, like I said, the counterbalance thing, I've messed with it a few times. I've messed with uh, when the Tank Series came out with, uh, with with Odyssey. They had longer shafts, big weights in the back, and it was overall a, a heavier putter and all that. I, I've tried them all. I just I, I just don't love counterbalance. So it, it doesn't help me, I guess, for whatever reason. Uh, I've messed with other ones, uh, like Sense Grips makes a... a, 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 a basically a, a grip that has a counterbalance unit that goes into it. Uh, I've tried the super stroke ones. I mean, you name it. I, I, it's not like I haven't given it a try. I just don't love counterbalance. So, um, so yeah, so mine here now has uh, a stability shaft in it, but the stroke lab shaft in there now is solid, kind of a solid or slightly metallic silver with a the steel tip section, just like the old ones. So, um, you know, overall, uh, a lot of a lot brought a lot carried over from last year. The insert is the same, at, or it, it's the same. It's a micro hinge star. It does look a little different. It's interesting, the which you won't be able to see anywhere. But if you see the last year's version, it almost had almost like an opaque white, like it was somewhat. I wouldn't say see, almost see through. I mean, you could almost see uh, where the uh, the metal insert uh, in the metal in the insert uh, was, and that's the thing with the micro micro hinge star. It's basically a uh, and a plastic insert, and then it has steel, uh, kind of a steel insert that actually makes contact with the ball. It's supposed to put a little better forward roll on the ball, uh, as well as it gives it a little firmer feel. I actually like the Micro Hinge Star. I know some people don't. I'm a fan just because I like that it's a little firmer. It gives a little click and impact, where, you know, the, the OG White Hot, which I actually do really like too, uh, you know, is very muted, uh, very soft, and, you know, that's, that's fine. I, I don't mind that, but uh, for me, I like that just a little bit of click, you know, that that the micro hinge star gives. Uh, and this one here, the new one this year, uh, I mean, it has the blue swirl, which is fine, but the actual plastic portion or you know the the rubber, whatever they they make it out, is actually less opaque. It's actually true white. You can't really see where uh, the steel uh, insert kind of fits into the plastic. So a little different look to me. It, it feels pretty much identical uh, when I put with both. Uh, they pretty much feel the same. I can't really notice a difference between the two, which is fine. Uh, like I said, I, like I said, I, I like the Micro Hinge Star. It's 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 probably my. I mean, right now it actually may be my favorite insert that that Odyssey makes. Uh, I might like it just a touch more than OG White Hot, and OG White Hot is is one of my favorite. I still have a uh, a Versa from like 2013 uh, that has that that White Hot insert in it, and I love that thing, but I may like this one just a little more. Like I said, just because it's a little more responsive. It, 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 it has that click, and if you miss it, you get a little feedback where, you know, the, the, the OG, the regular White Hot, if you miss it on the teal or toe a little bit, whatever, it's, it's a little harder to tell where you missed it. Uh, I mean, other than visually hopefully seeing the club head hit the ball, but, um, it's just one of those things. It's just less responsive, and, you know, like I said, I, I like a little firmer click to it, and, it's not a big deal, but uh, but like I said, I, I like the Micro Hinge Star. Very cool. Uh, it's a super hot, you know, this, the, the 10, <laughs> I'm trying to like, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the 10 series of the 10 with the single line or the one that I like that I've been playing here. Uh, is it higher MOI? I mean, they're going to say it's super high MOI. I don't, I haven't noticed a whole lot. Uh, like I said, down here, putting with it, kind of hitting 10 foot putts. Uh, you know, purposely hitting off the toe, purposely hitting off the heel. Yeah, purposely, definitely. I'm purposely doing it. Um, but no, I mean, purposely hitting off the toe and heel. It, it seems about the same forgiveness-wise as last year's Stroke Lab 10, which which is a good thing. I mean, I thought that was a very stable head. Uh, but the miss hits, you, you hit it off the toe, you hit it off the heel. Distance does suffer a little bit. You'll notice that it will kind of, you know, come up shorter, the, uh, shorter than the, the target you're aiming for. Not by a lot. I mean, it actually does roll pretty good, but it, it does come a little short. But it stays on line really well. Uh, you know, the, the toe shots actually, especially because toe shots typically go offline a little more, at least for me that I've noticed, 
than heel shots uh, with a lot of these these the face balanced uh, high MOI putters. I think the toe misses on this are actually really good. They're they're probably better than most of the putters I've I've tried out there, uh, at least you know the past you know couple of years. But uh, the toe miss hits still stay online really well. Like I said, you lose a little bit of distance on it, uh, you know. And especially like, you know, the perfect practice thing coming up the ramp, you can tell it, it loses some speed coming up there. But overall, the, the roll is pretty good. It's pretty forgiving. And I think, you know, if you miss it out on the toe, off the heel, and it comes up just a hair short, I think you're you're going to be pre still pretty impressed with how well it stays online. The, uh, you know, like I said, you may not make every single putt, but I think it's going to be leaving you with a tap in instead of leaving you with, you know, something that your buddies may or may not give you, depending on how stringent they are with their, uh, uh, with their genera or how generous they are out there and how much money's on the line. Uh, but overall, I think the, uh, you know, the micro inch star insert gives a good roll. Uh, I know it's, you know, the, the metal in there is supposed to give it more forward roll. I think it does give a better forward roll than the, than the OG white hot. Uh, the OG white hot for me is what, as good as it feels. It does have a touch of, uh, of skip and skid, uh, right up initially, right out of the gate. Not a ton. I mean, nothing that I think really affects a ton of accuracy with the putter, but it does have a little bit, especially on like, you know, right out of the gate. If you're early first tee time, got some dew on the green still, you'll see uh, a little hop and skid still with the, uh, the, o, you know, the OG or the white hot insert. The micro inch star, I think, you, you know, if you hit them side by side and had those lines, you'll see a quicker roll, less hop, less skid uh, with that insert. Um, you know, now with this putter, I, I think, I, I think still, in my opinion, is Odyssey's missing the boat that they don't have some type of custom program that you can order the 10 series with, you know, either a micro hinge star or an OG insert. I think they totally missed the boat on it. Um, and why they haven't done it yet. I mean, they're going to say, cause you're not going to sell enough to make money and that's fine. Whatever the reason, but I think there are so many people who would, so many more people who would buy this putter, this series of putter, the, the 10 series, whether it's two ball, 10, triple track, 10, uh, those, I think there's so many people who would buy them if they had the OG insert in them. Cause I think that's what people want, especially now that it's been re-released and there's the OG insert in the OG line of butters, <laughs> you know, there's the white hot insert there. Why you didn't even either make it an option or go that route with this putter is, is kind of beyond me. Like I said, I, I think that's a mistake. I think at least offering the option would have been awesome. And to this day, I still think that Odyssey should have a custom program where you could pick your head, the alignment type, your head weight, I mean, color is fine. I mean, these things are painted, just, you know, spray painted if you want it red or blue or whatever color. And then uh, offering your, your choice of insert, whether it's, you know, a micro inch star, a white hot, maybe make it like, you know, an aluminum or some type of, you know, like milled insert with like the two on diamond face, something like that. I, I, th I think, you know, I, I think that program would do really well. I know with our, you know, with kind of this audience and, and us tinkers and people who want what they want, I think that would be huge. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm really impressed. I really like this 10 series putter, the new one. Like I said, really like the look. I think it's a little easier on the eye. It's a little less distracting. I like the more squared off shape. Uh, I think it's still super high MOI. I think it's still really stable. The roll on it's really good. Um, and then, like I said, like, you know, misses on, on heel and toe, uh, and even high and low on the face, you still get a really good roll out of it. And I think it stays online really well. Um, you know, like I said, you may not quite get the ball all the way there, possibly, but I, I think it's going to stay online, and I think you're going to have tap-ins uh, as opposed to you know a foot or two left for uh, you know for for your remaining putt. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to get this thing out here more uh, on the course when I get a chance to. I just haven't yet, and, and you all know why. I'm going to say it every week. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and, and people who always ask me too, the stability shaft is it worth the money. I personally really love the stability shaft. I and, and and even if it's something where I can't even say yes, I'm making more putts. I love the fact that it just feels incredibly stiff. It feels like the head is exactly where I think it's going to be. Um, there's just no flex in the shaft. I mean, I've played some putters that have really flexible steel shafts in there, and they do. They they feel like they actually move during the stroke, and I don't like that. Um, so for me, I really love the stability stuff. You know, like I said, is is it making me make more putts? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know that I've, I, I don't play with one putter long enough to really keep a bunch of stats to say yes or no, uh, you know, from going from like one putter to the next each year. I, I just play too many putters, but overall, in terms of just pure feel, I, I love the stability stuff. And to me, it is worth it. Um, and like I said, I, I really like that, that ultra stiff feel that the head isn't moving. It's right where I know it is. It isn't twisting and nothing. Um, 
I, I really like that shaft. So a lot of people always, you know, DM me or on my, uh, my usual Wednesday questions, ask me about that. Like I said, I'm a huge fan. I, I really like their stuff. Other people, you know, I've got the one, the best comment I think was like, well, I guess, I guess, how did Jack win his 18 pages then if he never had a stability shaft? And I'm like, I mean, I get it. You know, if, if you want to look at it and say a $200, you know, uh, actually right now, I think they're like 130 bucks on sale right now. But, um, you know, people say like, you know, a $200 putter shaft is not in everybody's uh, budget. I totally get that. And I would never expect anyone to go out and buy one. I'm just going to tell you that I like it. And, you know, if you want to go out and check it out or whatever, hey, cool. If not, totally get it too. You know, like I said, it, it, it's a lot of money, but I'm a big fan. So uh, like I said, the Odyssey uh, 10 series, big fan. I'm going to play with it hopefully today. If not, it'll probably be the first putter that I take out for the first rounds I go play. Uh, I've got a couple others that are definitely lined up, shafted up, ready to go. Um, and I'm excited to hit a couple of these. So it's one of those where this definitely isn't just going to be right in the bag, you know, start or whatever. There's, I got a few other putters to try. So it, it's definitely, you know, if it misbehaves, it could see the closet pretty quick. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but overall, I think the, uh, the 10 series is really good. I, like I said, I, you know, all the guys on tour playing it, I think you're going to see a lot of them on the course this year. Uh, like I said, the two ball is really cool looking. It looks great. I just have never lined up the two ball well. Uh, ever since it came out, I was working in a shop uh, right when they knew when it came out, and I remember looking at it like, "Wow, this is so cool!" Whatever. I remember sitting on the putting green in the shop that I was working at, and just I, I just didn't make any putts with it. I never did, and I uh, I, I took a couple out to the course, a, a few different versions, uh, the DFX, some others, and uh, I just I never made a ton of putts. I just don't align the two ball well for whatever reason. Um, and the stuff with a straight line, like the standard 10 is, is what I, uh, I, I line up the best with. So, um, so yeah, overall, I'm super excited to, to get that thing out there and play some more with it. But so far indoors putting green, I've really liked it. It's, it's putted better than anything else uh, that I've used so far. Um, but again, like I said, the, my, my two line Chicago is still around. Uh, I've got a handful of my old putters. Uh, I may slap a shaft in the old last year's stroke lab 10. We'll see. Uh, if not, you know, it'll be here for something. Um, but, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, really like it. Uh, excited to get it out uh, on the actual course. So that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, so off with putters, but we're going to stick with the same brand. I mean, I know, you know, Callaway Odyssey, they're the same brand. Um, so the next thing I got to finally take out, and I was pretty excited to hit this just because I, I'd have some buddies who have hit it or own the, this, excuse me, this set of irons, and uh, it's the Apex Pro, so the new one. And... We got in, unfortunately, only a six iron because uh, I guess Callaway doesn't want me hitting all of the stuff, <laughs> I guess. So I only have a six iron, unfortunately, which uh, is a little bit of a bummer. I, I would have liked to hit, you know, maybe a four iron, a six iron, and like, uh, you know, like a, a nine iron or a pitching wedge or, you know, something like that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, I, I, I can only go with what they send us. So um, Apex Pro is... The brand new, uh, so it's the 21, the brand new Apex Pro out. Uh, has a great look to it. Uh, I'm a big fan. It kind of has this really heavy, almost medium blasted satin finish on it that carries over the face. Absolutely no glare. The uh, the overall package is is really compact. The top line is is pretty darn thin. Um, you know, it's it's not new level PF1 blade thin, uh, but it's it's thinner than my ZX7s. Uh, overall, the package looks really good. I, I will give it one knock. There's a little too much offset in the six iron. Uh, I mean, just I, just going for me, I'm going to give it a knock just because this is an iron for better players. I don't think better players need the offset, and I think that is going to cause some people not to buy it. And I know it's not a huge thing uh, for some people and all that, but I think when you look at the better players who have other options out there like T100, ZX7s, uh, you know, the Mizuno, M uh, I mean, even the JPX Tours, um, you know, I mean, there's so many options out there in that player's category, uh, piece, you know, even the P770s, stuff like that, um, you know, that, that they have other options. And I think there's just a hair too much offset in this iron for, uh, you know, for the better player. I, I think there's going to be certain better players who are going to overlook this iron, and they shouldn't, but I think they will because there's just a hair too much offset in it. And, I know Callaway's not asking for my opinion, and that's fine because I'm <laughs> miles away from uh, being a club designer. But just my opinion, I, I think they, it, it has too much offset personally. Um, overall, you know, the sole 
It seems like it has a good amount of bounce. I've only been able to hit it off mat so far, so turf interaction, I'm going to have to wait. Like I said, it may, I may just throw it in my bag, and uh, if I get out today to play, uh, I'll, I'll bring it with me and, and hit some shots with it. Uh, but I hit it actually really solid uh, on the range. I mean, I wish you could kind of see it. There's they, All these shots are pretty much center, which is, is pretty nice. I was hitting it pretty good. Um, but I brought it out there, was able to hit it right next to my ZX-7s, which is pretty awesome. Um, overall flight, a little bit higher than my ZX-7. It, it's just a touch higher. And granted, this has got a slightly different shaft. It's got the Elevate uh, ETS-115, which you know is going to fly a little higher than, than the Pond Modus 120s. So, you know, if I was able to put same shaft, same shaft, I think it would be pretty close, but these launch a little bit higher, and I think they would launch higher than my ZX-7s anyway. Uh, but overall, I think they launch just a little bit higher. Still pretty flat. I mean, they're not, you know, super high, uh, you know, launching, but they do get help get the ball up in the air pretty quickly. Um, the ball speed seems to be really good. Uh, you know, like I said, I was hitting it pretty much center most of the day. I mean, there's maybe a couple of slightly high toe, but uh, for the most part, hitting it, it pretty much dead center. And shots were pretty much mid to slightly mid high, uh, and the ball speed seemed pretty good. And the six iron here does have that AI cut face, so I think it's the three through seven iron in the pro have an actual cut face, so it's got a little added ball speed, a little more ball speed, especially on miss hits, you know, toe and heel. Uh, it's going to hold those miss hits. It definitely has uh, some tungsten in it for to help with forgiveness. And uh, then it also has uh, some of their micro microsphere technology to uh, to enhance the, the feel and sound. Uh, but the, the ball speed definitely noticed that it seemed to jump off the face a lot hotter. Uh, again, I wasn't really hitting with a launch monitor or anything. So in terms of ball speed, I, I couldn't necessarily tell you, but it did f visually look uh, like the ball was kind of jumping off the face here. Definitely a little faster than my ZX-7 uh, 6 iron. So I, I think that face does add something. Uh, like I said, I hit the ball actually pretty solid. I had a few off the toe that still actually went really well. I, I don't think I really hit too many, if any, shots that were really just weak, bad shots. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, even hitting it kind of a little high off the toe up here, uh, the ball seemed to still go pretty straight. I think overall it's a pretty forgiving iron. Uh, I would say pretty much, you know, on par with my ZX-7s. Stuff you hit out on the toe, uh, it probably does carry better ball speed. So if you were hitting into like a par or into the green and, you know, you hit it in the same spot, on apex pro versus the uh versus like say you know the zx7 i think you're gonna find the uh apex pro will probably get you on the green a little easier or a little better than zx7 it'll carry a little farther uh, maybe you know get you on the green instead of being short the uh like i said ball flight slightly higher it seemed to come down pretty steep though i think i don't think there's a ton of problem uh, about holding the green they did you know the ball flight was a little flatter i don't know if it was necessarily spin or just the actual flight uh zx7 seemed to land maybe just a touch more steep uh, in terms of descent angle again i don't think the apex pro you're gonna have any problem holding the green um but again, that, that's something that getting it on the course is the only way to kind of tell. And, and I'm going to try to get it, you know, take this thing out with me and, and hit it. Um, but overall, I think forgiveness and distance on these is really good. I think, you know, if you're somebody who, you know, like me, and I've, I've said this a few times where you're a player like me who you have a four iron in the bag. Well, now actually five iron is pretty much the longest, but a five iron, I don't necessarily hit that super long. You know, that, that for me is like a 185 club. And I think something like this will add a little distance or it helps at least help keep that distance when you miss it just a little bit, um, especially better than a one piece forged iron like I'm playing. So if you're somebody who needs a little more distance or, or maybe needs a, just a smidge more help in the, in, the, in the top side of the bag, I think the Apex Pro is a great option for that. And, you know, with, with having the ability to pretty much put any steel shaft in there and, and no upcharge, there, it, it's a pretty good option for anybody who plays a specific shaft as well. But, um, yeah, overall, I think the iron is, is really playable. I think it's you know pretty darn forgiving for for the size of it. It's got a pretty thin top line. It's not a big club, um, you know, heel to toe. It definitely maybe looks a smidge shorter than, than my ZX sevens when you set them down next to each other. Like I said, top line is definitely thinner, um, so it looks a little more compact. The only knock, like I said, I'll, I'll give it is it, it does have a little more offset, or at least the way that that hosel flows into the leading edge, it looks like it has more offset than, offset than the ZX-7. And the actual measurements may be, um, may be pretty close, but like I said, visually, when you set it down, um, you know, you can definitely see that. Uh, sound and feel, it, it actually had a little more click to it than I expected. I think I expected this to be, you know, a, a solid kind of forged iron feel. 
definitely had a firmer face and firmer feel than than ZX7. Uh, it had definitely a little more click and impact. And oh, I know the six iron is the two or the multi piece head, so it's got you know it's it's hollow body. It's got a, a, a stainless steel face uh, that was designed with AI to keep that ball speed, but then it's got a forged frame around it. Um, so that part I know multi piece heads will never feel. 100% as solid as a, as a, as a one-piece, or it's very rare or very hard to do. But it definitely was a little firmer and a little clickier than I thought. I, I was a, a little bit uh, taken by that. Um, and, and I was because I have a friend of mine, my, my buddy Ramon, who has eight through pitching wedge and a combo set that he absolutely raves about. And he said they feel and sound phenomenal. They're super soft. Um, and makes sense because the eight iron down doesn't have the AI face. So, um, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. But the long irons here, at least the six iron that, that I have, uh, definitely had a, a, a little louder sound to it. It wasn't, uh, you know, as solid of just a thud. And again, hitting right next to ZX7, you know, it was it was definitely a, a noticeable difference in terms of sound and feel. Uh, the the uh, Apex Pro was just, uh, you know, like I said, a, a little clickier, a little firmer. And, you know, I, you know, I would say it's horrible. It's, it's not a bad iron by any means. It's not going to, uh, you know, it's still going to be pretty, pretty good. It's just, like I said, a little louder and, and it has a little firmer feel to it. So, um, you know, depending on what your main goal is with a set of irons, if you're truly looking for feel and all and, and that, I, you know, I'm going to lean, say lean towards ZX7. If you're definitely looking for something where it's more performance based in terms of, I, I need a little more forgiveness in terms of ball speed when I miss it. Um, and I need a little, you know, higher ball flight. Apex Pro is going to be perfect for that. So it, it's really going to depend a little bit on the player. But overall, it's a really good performing iron. It, it really does. It, it it goes pretty straight. You can still work it, though. I mean, I had a, a couple shots where I kind of laid down the, the, the right shoulder, dropped everything right, and that thing just went way right. Um, and I had my usual over-the-top, you know, smother it and hit it dead left as well. Um, but, but again, the, the, the shots that were just off, really carried well and, and, and stayed online fairly well. Like I said, probably a little better than my ZX-7 in terms of forgiveness on those slight miss hits. You know, that one where, you know, you maybe hit the left side of the green and it stays on, but the pin's on like kind of the right. This here, you probably maybe keep it closer to the middle of the green. You know, it, it's probably a few yards tighter dispersion-wise on those slight miss hits. I mean, if you snap hook it or, or slice it big time, it's it's going left or right. There's no way around that. But if you, you know, just have that slight miss where, you know, like I said, you, you, you catch the fringe on the left-hand side, pins kind of on the right, middle right, I, I think the, the Apex Pro kind of stays online a little better on that shot. So, you know, like I said, if you're somebody who, you know, that's kind of your miss and you really want to, you know, take some of that out, I, I think the Apex Pro is definitely worth trying. Um, if you're looking for the ultimate and softest feel and solid, or, you know, softest feel, softest sounding iron, I, I don't think the Apex Pro is that. Uh, at least not in the long irons. I, I, again, I would love to hit the short irons as well. It's just, unfortunately, I, I can only hit what I'm set. And, uh, um, I'm, you know, like I said, I, I definitely want to get out and hit the eight iron through and see if there's a difference in sound and feel in those because, like I said, I, I have a buddy who has those and, and he raves about them. So I really want to uh, try that out. Um, but, yeah, but like I said, I, I think the Apex Pro overall is really solid iron. I think they're going to sell a bunch of them. Um, and I think it's going to be a great kind of combo set between Apex and Apex Pro. And then they even throw like the DCB in there. Uh, so I think between those three irons uh, that they make, and they, and they basically made them to combo. I mean, they basically come out and said, here's the way you can kind of combo it up, uh, combo them up. And I think Callaway and a bunch of these companies are getting smart about that. Why not, you know, offer these combo sets where people get help in the long irons, but then they have their players irons or, or more players irons look in the, in the short irons. I think it's a great way to to kind of really custom fit a set and dial it into somebody. So um, overall, I was impressed. Like I said, turf interaction, I, I think they're going to be pretty decent. Uh, like I said, they have uh, some bounce on them. Not as much as, you know, say ZX7, but they do have some bounce. I think anybody who's a, you know, shallow divot taker to, you know, picker is going to have no problem playing these. I think the turf interaction will be great for them. Um, and like I said, the, the distance-wise, if you're looking for just a little more distance but still want that compact player's shape uh, and look, you know, Apex Pro, there, there, there's going to be, I think, very few irons out there that kind of offer that kind of distance and ball speed in this shape and this size. So, it, it, you know, there's definitely a, a market out for these things, and you know Callaway's going to set, sell a bunch of them. So, overall, a really good iron. Like I said, uh, just a couple changes I, I would make to it, but, you know, again, I'm not a designer. Nobody asked me, and, and rightfully so. They shouldn't. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, those are the two... Uh, 
kind of my two options this week. Uh, like I said, I've got some other stuff uh, going, so we'll we'll hit some more. Like I said, I'm going to try to get out to the course. If I can get out to the course next week also, it would be awesome. Uh, I'm just going to see if the, the rain holds off. I think it's supposed to hit like maybe the mid-50s. At least that's what it says now. If you live in Michigan, you know that weather today means absolutely nothing because what happens the next day is could be totally different. But uh, but if we get some mid-50s days next week and it doesn't rain like crazy like it might, then uh, we should get some more courses open and, and start actually playing some golf. So uh, my, my commissioner already emailed us about my league and asking who's in and who's out. So all that stuff's coming, man. We're, we're getting there, and I'm super excited. So, uh, yeah, but my commissioner emailed me. I mean, I think I, I had to be the first person to respond because it was literally instantaneous. <laughs> it was just like, yep, I'm in. Like, done. Uh, I will, you know, send you the money. Let, let, let's roll. When do we start? I'm ready to go. So, like I said, uh, hopefully, when you're listening to this, hopefully I'm out on the course playing. But we'll see. Who knows? We'll see if uh, we can get out there and and, uh, and tee it up. I hope so because I've got uh, – uh, I, and the funny thing is I, I'm not at the office, so I don't have actually like an absolute crap ton of clubs. So this, again, maybe one of those times when if you saw me on the course, I might only have like 15 clubs in the bag, which is pretty shocking. So, but again, we'll see. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try some stuff out. So overall, like I said, loving the Odyssey 10. Uh, Apex Pro is really good. And go try them out for yourself. See what you, what, what you think and, uh, and let me know. If you want to uh, have any questions, anything like that, if there's anything you want me to, that you think I should try that I haven't, Hit me up on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod. I love uh, chatting it up there. Uh, I've been, you know, I DM with people all the time about different equipment, all that. On Wednesdays, I usually do my little Q and A, so look out for that, which is always always a blast. I love the fact that you guys always hit me up with cool questions. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, like I said at Club Junkie Pod on Instagram. I would love it. Let's uh, let's chat up some stuff. And uh, yeah, I think that's all I got. So everybody have a great weekend. Hopefully you're somewhere where you can play or you're getting close. Hopefully the, the snow's melting, all that. And uh, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.